Stalking is just one type of abusive relationship. We talked with insider Dr. Daniel Bober, who says you cannot take this lightly. It can happen to anyone. We're going to talk about a topic that can never be talked about enough, which is abusive relationships. So how often is this something that you deal with in, in your practice, Dr. Bober? I actually, unfortunately, see this quite often. So it's, it's really a problem. Uh, and a lot of people who are going through this, who are you know, the victims, they don't really know where to turn for help. Can we first, before we go to this, um, this great video, talk about what is considered an abusive relationship? So, you know, that's a very broad term, what's an abusive relationship, but I would say any relationship where you're sort of losing yourself, where you're not, you're, you're not the person that you were before the relationship, where you're engaging in unhealthy patterns of behavior, you know, maybe, you know, your physical health is suffering and your mental health is suffering or you're suffering from depression, anything that really affects you negatively to the point where it affects your everyday functioning, I think would be considered an abusive relationship. Now, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has a short video that explains what intimate partner violence is and how it affects people. Let's take a look. Intimate partner violence is defined as physical violence, sexual violence, stalking, and psychological aggression by a current or former intimate partner, and is preventable. Intimate partner violence threatens the well-being of millions of people and their families every single day. Intimate partners may include current or former spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, dating partners, or sexual partners. Intimate partner violence can occur between heterosexual or same-sex couples. Some victims may suffer just one experience, while others endure violence that lasts for years. One in four women and one in nine men have experienced intimate partner violence in their lifetime and one in 10 high school students have experienced physical teen dating violence, which is a form of intimate partner violence. Intimate partner violence consequences are widespread. It impacts physical and mental health. It results in billions of dollars in medical, mental health, and lost work productivity costs. But the good news is that intimate partner violence is preventable. We have strategies that can help you prevent this problem in your community. We can prevent intimate partner violence by teaching safe and healthy relationship skills, engaging influential adults, working to prevent violence starting in early childhood, creating protective environments, strengthening economic support for families, and supporting survivors to increase safety and lessen harms. So this intimate partner violence that we hear, this is a form of, abusive, of being in an abusive relationship. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, stalking itself, you know, there's different types of stalkers, but the mm -hmm. most common type of stalker is called the rejected stalker. And that's okay. someone who you have an intimate relationship with who maybe wants the relationship to be over and you so you feel rejected. And so you act out in ways that, you know, could be potentially dangerous or illegal. And I know that it's actually National Stalking Awareness Month and obviously something that we constantly need to bring awareness to. So why? to people stalk others. You, you almost see it as something innocent. I mean, I remember my mom would drive me by the, my crush's house, but that's innocent. But we're not talking about something like that. Not if she did it 20 times. Well, no. Right. Only like two or three. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, that's no big deal. But you know, s certain stalkers, stalkers have certain personality traits like narcissism or entitlement, and they don't take rejection well. And Which is a type of stalker you just mentioned. Right. So a rejected stalker is the most common, but also the most dangerous type of stalker. And I'm going to say something, and I want your audience to listen to this, and it's very important, especially you know, for, to women or men out there who may be a victim of stalking. Don't think for one second that if you get a protective order or a restraining order that that's going to make you safe, because that could cost you your life. Getting, Are you encouraging not getting one? I, I'm not saying not to get one. But I'm saying if you do get one, you still have to be vigilant and you still have to be careful. There is this concept in the stalking literature called dramatic moments, and that's when violence is likely to escalate. Right. Dramatic moments are things like if the person gets arrested, if they get served with a protective order, an anniversary date in the relationship, a court hearing, a child custody case. These are all times when violence can escalate rapidly. And so there are certain risk factors we look for in stalkers who are more likely to be violent. For example, stalkers that make face-to-face -face threats, stalkers that had an intimate relationship with you. The closer, the more intimate relationship, the more dangerous the stalking behavior. Okay. Leaving notes on your car, visiting your house in person, 
um, a history of violence, a history of substance use, drugs or alcohol, all increase the risk of violence. So wow. you need to be very vigilant and you need to do things, for example, like change your routine. Don't go to work the same way every day. Contact law enforcement and very important, document, document, document. Document every detail. When the person called, if they showed up at your house, when you called the police. These are very important because you will need to help build a case right. later in court. How much does social media nowadays uh, change the game when it comes to stalking? I mean, it, it, by just pressing blocked, are you protected? Not necessarily, you know. Maybe someone will come in, as we were discussing during the break, uh, through someone else's other person's profile. You know, it doesn't necessarily protect you. It's called this concept of ghosting, you know, right. blocking them on your phone, blocking them on social media. It helps, but often that can actually make it worse because then the, the person who's rejected feels even more rejected. Now you're ignoring them. So the point is, is that there's not one stop shopping. You know, you have to look at each situation as a unique individual and you have to make a decision based okay. on that. So it's safe to say that you should never confront a stalker yourself. No, you should never confront a stalker yourself. Okay. But it's important that before the stalking begin, that if you're ending the relationship, to be very clear, to be very direct, and to be very firm. Mm -hmm. Because sending any mixed messages is called right. what we call intermittent reinforcement. Then you're sort of giving the person hope. Right. So if you're saying, we will never be together, I'm sorry it didn't work out. What they're seeing is, you, she wrote you, me. Right, you, right. You, need, you need to move on with your life. You can't say, now's not the time, maybe in the future. Because even that little right. statement is giving hope. some sort of hope. And the person's going to be like, yeah, yeah, she'll she'll come back to me. Or, you better or just ignore it. Right, or he'll come back, to, or right. he'll come back to me. He just doesn't know it yet, right. you know, sort of thing. So, it's very important to be direct, to be firm, and to be unambiguous and send a clear message. So it's okay to respond to them. In the beginning, it's okay, but at some point, you have to cut off all communication. All communication. Because if you don't, the person will see that as false mm -hmm. hope. Now, this hour, we've talked about a couple of different mental health issues from addiction to stalking and abusive relationships. I want to leave our viewers with some phone numbers of where to call for help. When you have the National Domestic Violence Hotline, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Help Hotline, and the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Please pick up the phone if you or anyone you know is going through any of these uh, issues that we have been speaking about. And Dr. Bober says the most important takeaway is that you do not have to suffer alone. Tell other people, be aware of your surroundings, and more importantly, stay safe. That does it for us today. If you want to watch more videos like what you've seen, download the Health Channel app and visit our website, allhealthtv.com. Also, follow us on social media. We want to be with you, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at All Health TV. Thanks for watching the Health Insiders on the Health Channel. I'm Kathy Buccio. We'll see you next time.